Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Hi, my name is Devesh Pandit, and I'm a certified data protection officer. And today I'm going to present with uh, the subject, what is GDPR? And I am going to mainly focus on the technical aspect of the subject, as I'm not the legal professional so i won't be able to provide you any legal advice so seek no legal advice from this webinar as i'm not a legal advisor with that legal notice i will proceed further and let's see what is our uh, so here is my little brief bio and uh, i'm a CISA, cissp cnx a certified ethical hacker cbcp mbci cnx a lot of certification i have 35 years of experience in managing risk compliance, security, and business continuity. I have provided security advisory and security to card industry for many years. I have sat on several PCI rule writing committees, resolving frequently asked questions, helping the secure card industry. And some of my previous employers are China Union Pay, for which I had done some consulting work, Valid USA and Discover as a full-time employer. Uh, currently, I work as a senior auditor with smart car auditors and I conduct PCI production audits for MasterCard and MX. I do physical and logical uh, audits. I also conduct ISO certificate audits and I also provide CDPO uh, compliance audits for uh, GDPR. So today we will look into some of the GDPR concepts. I will explain some of the information technology security perspective, uh, what is expected out of a data protection officer, some diligence on, on GDPR uh, data protection, and some of the glossaries that we want to uh, review in the context of information technology. So let's get on uh, with the subject without further ado. So what is the GDPR? GDPR was adopted in April 2016, which is already in effect. Uh, it is already uh, June. So that was uh, adopted in May of 2018. If you want to uh, download the entire regulation, you can just Google it and you will find this link uh, that I have uh, provided the URL and make sure that you download ENTXT PDF version so that you can download the English version of it. So what is GDPR? This is a new European regulation which is standardizing and strengthening the European citizens' uh, data protection rights. As you know, uh, there were several, uh, several European states had different uh, privacy regulations and because of uh, them being in a European Union, they were facing a specific problem of uh, a citizen moving from one state to another or one person getting married to another state and they were having a different kind of uh, problems of privacy. Uh, so they, they wanted the standardization and they fought for it and they, they now have a standardized uh, GDPR. So this applies to a European citizen. I am trying to make myself clear th that this is about the European citizen and this applies to European citizen. So any and all public and private organization handling, storing or processing of large amount of sensitive data, se sensitive personal data of European citizen. So in other words, if you are doing any business with European citizen or if you are doing any business with Europe and uh, if you are handling large amount of sensitive data then probably you have to look into the matter and you have to make sure that you are handling their personal data even if you are a non-European company then also you have to make sure that you are following uh, GDPR uh, because uh, the GDPR follows the European citizen wherever they go uh, for example if a European student or visitor or guest or their employee or customer if they come and visit United States then they, their their privacy their, their privacy or their private data also uh, follow them and uh, we have to protect their data. So that's what they are talking about. So the scope and opt-in, the Data Protection Act 
uh, DPA and GDPR. So in European Union, there are about uh, 28, uh, not about, there are 28 states and different states have different uh, uh, laws. And currently the word is out that UK and uh, other countries, uh, uh, they are, they are uh, kind of uh, uh, giving away their, giving away their uh, previous uh, uh, Europe, uh, the, the previous uh, privacy law that they had, and they are merging or they are enforcing GDPR because GDPR will automatically will be replacing the enforcement uh, starting of May, May of 2018. So basically, this data protection law uh, affects uh, those who are in European Union. Okay, and uh, it, it also applies to the city, European citizens' personal data uh, with the consideration of the European, the company, whether they are in European Union or not, because this applies to the European Union citizen, their data. Okay, so whether they are in European Union or not, it applies to the citizens, the citizens' data. So please remember that. The Data Protection Act requires a negative opt, meaning whether you, you uh, make sure that uh, you ask for the permission. Previously, we were spammed uh, for email and we were receiving the email from uh, from the agency or the entities for which we have not even asked for the information. But now, because of the, this Data Protection Act, we have to negatively opt, meaning we have to opt in, okay? So if I want to receive an email from a company XYZ, I have to opt in. Unless I opt in, they cannot send me the, the material or whatever they want to send me. So they cannot send, they cannot spam me unless and until I have opt in. So if I have uh, given permission to uh, send me emails to multiple companies, they will send me the email. But if I have not opt in, then they will not send me. So opt in is the key word here. All right, so what is the non-compliance and how serious they are? Well, the penalty is like 4% of the annual global revenue or uh, serious penalties up to 20 million euros, whichever is greater, and that is mind-boggling. Uh, uh, I haven't seen any, uh, but there, there are some lawsuits are going on already, so this is, this is a lot of money. So th that's why that's why being a technical person, and again, I'm not a legal person, but being a technical person, this is a lot of money, and that's why I decided to choose on uh, speak on this subject. All right. So, uh, what is data protection principle? So, in this GDPR uh, article number five, they have spelled out what is the applic applicable data protection principle. So lawful processing is it, it, that is uh, described in Article 6, condition for consent, Article 7, child's consent and rules around it, it is in Article 8, special categories of data profiling, that is in Article 9, criminal data, Article 10, data processing not requiring identification, that is in Article 11. So lawful processing, what is that? Meaning you should collect data law lawfully meaning you should not put a gun to somebody's head and say, hey, give me your data or else. Condition for consent means you should always get a consent before you collect data. And we will talk about that as we go. Child's consent. We have heard a lot of horror stories around child's uh, pornography and this and that. And there are no rules around it. Or if there were rules around it, they were bypassing the rules and etc. And we all know about it. So there are specific rules around that, their privacy of it, and how to protect their data. 
So uh, those uh, are written in Article 8. Special categories of data, profiling, meaning what religion you have, what kind of lifestyle you have, uh, what race you are, uh, etc. is been described in uh, uh, Article 9, meaning how to handle those data and how to protect them and how to handle those data is written in Article 9. So my point here is if you are handling this kind of data, then you will specifically read that article and follow those instructions. For example, criminal data. For example, if they give you a specific information on how to process a criminal data, they will give you a specific information. And then you read Article 10 and then follow the specific information on criminal data processing and then you apply that. And then you will not be in trouble. And data processing not requiring identification that is in Article 11. So these are specific articles that you should look into if you are, if you are a data professional and if you are looking into this uh, uh, GDPR from the data protection uh, uh, implementation part of it. All right, so one of the most important thing is, uh, is uh, data protection officer. So you need a, a formal designation, you know, having a data protection officer uh, post in your organization uh, who has a large amount of data which is sensitive and that is why you need a data protection officer who will be a liaison between the controller, processor, agencies, and uh, this person will uh, keep himself up to date with all the regulations and rules and regulations which will come in play and there will be some updates. So his, roles, his role will be uh, to keep himself educated and uh, uh, implement the GDPR uh, in that organization and uh, if there is a breach, uh, he will be responsible for notifying the agencies and the subject, the natural person, in given particular uh, time frame. Uh, according to the Article 55, uh, the supervisory authority uh, needs a notification within 72 hours. Uh, the good thing about it is that the data protection officers are not responsible for any mistakes or breaches. Uh, the management is uh, so basically there are uh, they are the point of contact and they are liaisons but they are not responsible for the breaches but at the same time they are they are the they are the implementers they are keeping track of what is happening in GDPR world and similar to what we know in our car production uh, world we have a brand vendor program administrator or BPA. So similarly, they have a supervisory authority, SA, and you will be notifying to uh, the supervisory authority by documenting what is the nature of the breach, uh, what is the personal data category, number of subjects involved, or the approximation of it, number of approximate records in the jeopardy, likely number of consequences associated with the impacts, any measures taken, um, uh, number of mitigation actions, efforts in progress, incident, timeline, whatever that you have, law informants, agencies informed and working, uh, and working on it, name of the DPO and their contact details, etc. So uh, one important thing in, uh, uh, in the GDPR is that you need a DPO, data protection officer appointment. So if you are a large organization and if you are processing a large data of the European citizen, then you need a data protection officer. All right. So uh, what is the applicability guideline? So basically, uh, you have to check when you have when you have uh, slightest doubt apply this rule and check it out that is your organization located in, in Europe well if you are in Europe then GDPR definitely applies 
If you are not in Europe, for example, let's say you are in the United States, so that so that does uh, you are not in U uh, Europe, but you are in USA. So does the data subject stay or uh, reside in the Europe? Uh, uh, the answer is no. Uh, then uh, you have to ask another question. The, the question is, is the processing linked to offering or goods or services? And the answer is yes, then the GDPR applies. If the answer is no, then you ask another question. Is the data subject traveling in EU, EU for, the time, for, for the moment? If the answer is no, then GDPR does not apply. If the answer is yes, and the another question that you asked there was, if the processing or linked to offering or goods or services are, uh, is a link to, uh, is the processing linked to offering goods or services, and the answer is yes, then GDPR apply. And then the answer is no, then you ask another question. Is the processing linked to monitoring behavior in Europe? If the answer is no, but the uh, answer is yes, then GDPR does apply. So basically what it boils down to is if the processing linked to offering of goods or services, if the answer is yes, or is the processing linked to monitoring behavior in Europe, if the answer is yes, then also you are required to implement GDPR. So regardless, wherever you are, you have to answer this question and based on that, you have to, uh, you have to implement the uh, GDPR because remember, the GDPR follows the European citizen, their, their personal data, and we are talking about the consumer uh, personal data. So we have to make sure that you apply uh, the GDPR protection to that. So as a DPO, as a data protection officer, how will, you, how will you prepare your organization? So you have to understand what personal data you have, where the European citizens are coming from, which country they are coming from, where the data is held, which department is holding their data, are, are their data in multiple regions. Let's say you are in the United States and you have offices in multiple uh, region, you have multiple uh, data in multiple state, and then uh, you have to determine how that data is managed. Is that data proliferated? Uh, is it uh, staying in a, in a clear text or is it secured? Is it uh, encrypted? How is it managed? With whom the data is shared? Are you sharing that data with the third party? Uh, are, you, are you obtaining the consent? Uh, are you obtaining the consent with the affirmative response? Are you, are you, are you, are you are saving that uh, consent? And are you saving that affirmative response received from the consent giver? And I'm talking about the European citizen. That is why you must have seen uh, lately from April, May, all the website that you visit, uh, that, that they are asking you the first question, hey, where are you, uh, where are you uh, uh, living? Are you living in United States or are you coming from Europe or where? And based on that, they are building your cookie and based on that, they are asking you to get your consent and they are, they are trying to make sure that you give an affirmative response. So that's what we are talking about. And then based on that, how we are storing their data. The data stored must be freely given, meaning lawfully processing, informed and un unambiguous. So that, that should be like, you should be asking that question in a way that that is not un unambiguous. All right, so let's talk about some uh, glossaries and let's try to understand some focal point of data protection so that we can implement data protection in a better way. So we are familiar as a, as a, a PCI car production uh, uh, processor or uh, a manufacturer or a, a perso uh, shop. We might be familiar with this picture. Uh, and let's see how we can uh, correlate uh, GDPR way and uh, car production way. And we will try to correlate uh, our uh, requirement. So the first requirement is lawful, lawfulness, fairness, and transparency of collecting the GDPR data. So number one, you have to notify upfront 
you know, by giving them message or notice, uh, displaying a flow of information and entities involved. So first thing you have to do is notify them that, hey, we are going to collect this data and this is how we are going to process the data. This is how from uh, we will collect this data for uh, for this purpose and this is how your data will flow and this is how it is going to move and the end result will be this. So this is the notice. This is the this is how it is going to play out. So this this is called lawfulness. This is called fairness and transparency. So this is this is what you have to show. This is what you have to show to the person who is giving you the data. All right. So this is the rule number one. Rule number one, you have to show them that you are doing your due diligence by telling them that, hey, we are collecting your data with a lawfulness. Second one is purpose of limitation. Limit of the use of use with clearly identified scope. Data used for market research, then discard after use. And we will talk about this in detail in, uh, in a couple of bullets. For example, if this data is collected for driver license, then you will use only for that purpose. You will not sell this data for the market research. If this information is collected for uh, the purpose of issuing a passport, then you will use that data to issue the passport and you will not use for that purpose. So that is what you will identify in your uh, preamble and you will not you will not use that data you will so in the rule number one lawfulness when you are notifying them you have to indicate that this is the purpose of my uh, collecting this data data minimization if the gender is needed for the processing of whatever that you are trying to collect the data don't ask for the age if the region is asked then don't ask for the gender so if so 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 when you are trying to collect for let's say you are designing an application or you are trying to collect some data for for some some application that you are trying to design and when you are trying to create a form and then you design that form upfront so that you can minimize the data and for that purpose when you decide you decide upfront and say hey I don't need a gender Okay, or I don't need an age, or I don't need a race, for example, or I don't need a date of birth, or I don't need a gender. So don't ask for it. If I can get make do with the region, and I'll give you one quick example. Let's say I'm going to I'm going to go and eat in the restaurant, and then they are making a survey, and then they are going to make a survey. They are going to ask me which uh, which item did you enjoy in our restaurant. All right, and then they have five items. Item number one, two, three, four, five. And if I say I like item number three, and that's it. So they, they should not ask me what is my gender, what is my race, what is my uh, region, where am I coming from, what is my zip code, no, nothing nothing doing. If I, if, that is called data minimization, all right? So let's move on. Accuracy. Integrity of data, encryptions, checksum, verification, and validation. Proof of temper-proof processing, non-repudiation, and key management. And this is not foreign to us. As we come from car production, we all know about the integrity of data, encryption, checksum, verification, and validation. Proof, proof of temper-proof processing, non-repudiation, and key management. This is near and dear to us. As we move from here, from left to right, we all know that every step, every step we want to make sure that the data is, data maintains its integrity. Even in, even in DMZ, we want to maintain the integrity. After this firewall, as, as, as we move into this DMZ, we want to make sure that, that our integrity is maintained. And then second firewall and the data preparation network and the personalization network. So we know our routine. We know our routine and we want to make sure that uh, our HSMs are maintained properly or uh, dual access card, uh, you know, access control and all that non repudiation and the key expiry and the key management, key custodians and uh, file uh, verification and uh, uh, for the checksum and the log verification and audit trails and integrity of data. So this is all very near and dear to us, near to us and I don't have to 
harp on that. So, so that's what we are talking about. And you will understand as I go uh, forward in this slide uh, webinar, you will understand why am I harping on that and uh, you, you, you will understand why I'm talking about this because this is all about personal data. Storage limitation. Store data based on data classification policy. Once again, we know about sensitive data. We all deal with pan data. We all deal with sensitive data. So that's what we are talking about. So tool installed on uh, notification for violation of classification and storage date expiry. So uh, 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 if you don't have any tool, uh, if you remember previously, uh, um, in some organizations, there were, there were some requirement to identify that, hey, don't store uh, social security numbers or driver license on your C drive. So they were like giving out uh, a PII sniffing tools so that you can sniff uh, a credit card number or a social security number or a uh, any, any PII information so that you can sniff those kind of uh, uh, information and then you can uh, you can delete them uh, those documents or you can archive them and you can put it in a secure place so similarly you have to you have to install tools notifying them that hey this classified information is uh, is expired and you don't have to store anymore because this this is required this storage limitation because because here you have told them that hey we will not use this data uh, after let's say December uh, 2019 for example and then December 19 has arrived and we need to delete this data because uh, this classifi classified data needs to be deleted whatever that you have uh, uh, collected this data under data minimization that needs to be deleted so that there, there you go you need to have a tool and if you don't have a tool either you have to buy a tool or you have to develop a homegrown tool so that you can you can minimize the uh, the storage limitation integrity and confidentiality multi-factor authentication like i was saying going from left to right travel wherever you are you need a, a multi-factor authentication and encryption, encrypt, 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 anywhere you go, this is all encrypted data from left to right. More, more you go inside, it is more encrypted, okay? Encrypt, decrypt, encrypt, decrypt, encrypt, wherever you need the uh, decrypted data, then uh, it, as it goes forward, encrypted, decrypted, you know, so uh, encrypt and decrypt as you need, but AES encryption or higher is required and access control as and when needed is in play. So data collection, the GDPR way is no different than uh, uh, car production way. So that's what I'm trying to say. And it is very near and dear to me. So that, that's why I said I can talk on this subject and I chose this subject. All right, so let's move on. So some definitions, a recipient is anybody, a natural person, a legal person, a public authority agency, or any other body, any other body to which uh, the personal data are disclosed, uh, whether a third party or not. However, the EU government will not be considered as a recipient because, uh, you know, like it is like an IRS. I'm submitting my tax return to IRS and in that case, uh, it will not be a, a recipient because they have to collect the data. Uh, personal data, any data that is construed as a personal data, for example, any, any, any trait that I have, such as my name, my identification number, my location data, where I'm living, uh, my online identification, such as my IP address, my cookie, uh, my physiological or my physical trait or my genetic, uh, mental, economical, cultural, uh, social identity, that is a personal data, all right? So that could be construed as a, 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 a personal data for a natural person. All right, so let's get going. Uh, third party, an official appointed third party needs to be uh, appointed, officially appointed, and a consent must be given by a natural person by a signature, and it has to be freely given by free choice, okay, in an unambiguous indication of data subject, which by he or she, by statement, by clear affirmative action, 
All right, so that is a third party. So I can appoint a third party. So when we are dealing with a uh, third party, when we are doing uh, GDPR work in our, in our uh, uh, car processing, for example, we need to be careful when we are sitting in a meeting and we are discussing about GDPR data, uh, we have to, when we, when we hear this word third party, then uh, our ears should go up and say, hey, what are you talking about? Who is the third party here? I need, I need to see the proof that they have given you a statement and you have a freely given specific unambiguous indication that you have a consent received from a natural person. So that's what, that is why this term is important. Processing, any processing, it is processing is like, you know, collecting, recording, uh, organizational uh, structuring, storage, adaptation, alteration, retrieval, construction, anything, anything processing, any massaging that you are doing on the data is called processing. So uh, they have, so this is processing, data processing. Anything you do with the data is called processing, whether by the automated processing or whatever. So that is called processing. Restriction of processing, meaning these are these are these are terms that I would like to throw out. Meaning, a data, a natural person may decide that I no longer I don't want to process this data from here point forward, and I need to see where my data is. Okay, so these are the two things that they want to they want to make it happen, and restriction of processing meaning making of stored personal data with the aim of limiting their processing in the future. Meaning if I say don't do, don't process my data from this point forward. So interpret this as from this point forward from now on. So let's say your data is in cloud. Okay. And uh, uh, let's say you have downloaded this data and it could be on a disk. It could be in the database somewhere. And then it could be reside on a tape. Uh, I was listening to this Facebook and uh, uh, this uh, uh, during the election time, uh, something happened, and uh, I, I, by the, by no means I'm I, I'm uh, following any uh, any uh, particular party uh, in this country, in United States, nor nor in India. But uh, the point here is uh, they were saying that if a copy is made, for example, of uh, data from Facebook, it could be in a cloud and it could be downloaded to a disk and then that data is copied to a database and then it, it is copied to a tape or whatever. So there could be an N number of copy. The proliferation could be it could be in n number of copies okay so once once the data is created and copied and given you know it is it is copied then there is there is no end to it meaning i will give you one quick example let's say you have a you have a microsoft word uh, document and you download it from uh, your uh, uh, main uh, file server and you download it on your hard drive, and then you made a copy on your uh, uh, in another folder, and then another folder. So that means you have a copy of a copy of a copy. So there are n number of copies, and then you don't have a clue how many copies of a backup or whatever that you might have. So it is a it is a n number of proliferated data that you might not even have a knowledge of meaning you are a data processor and you might not have a you might not have a clue of how many versions of that uh, particular record is out there now if you want to if you want to delete a record from a cloud or a disk or a tape if it is on a tape then you might have to download it on a disk and then you have to uh, delete it and then you have to take a backup again what I'm trying to say here is this is impossible task because I, I am in information technology for 40 years and I have no idea how to simultaneously simultaneously delete from each and every instance of a, a copy. And uh, since I'm talking to my peers and I'm, I'm very active in um, 
talking into uh, different uh, groups of uh, committees and all that. So I, I come across this term and I'm also active in blockchain group uh, talking to people. So this is another possibility and if you get any feedback on this uh, topic, please shoot me an email because I'm interested in learning how to stop, uh, how to delete a record from moving point forward because I have no idea how am I going to implement this. Because if, if somebody comes to me and say, delete my all my records from this point forward, so I have to delete all the records in the, in, in the past and then I have to make sure that I don't delete uh, make sure that it doesn't happen in future. So this could be the blockchain could be another option. So if you know anything, please let me know. I will be more than happy to uh, learn something from you guys. So so this is one option implement blockchain, but this is a you know new technology, but this could be one one possible op option. Anyway, let's get going. So profiling, we all know that uh, we don't like this word, but it is out there and uh, anything that relates to your pro performance at work, economic situation, health, uh, personal preferences, interest, uh, re reliability, behavior, location, movements, religion, anything. So, so when you hear this word, when you're, when you're uh, collecting data or you're processing the data and you are uh, in the process of uh, providing security for this uh, GDPR data, and you are sitting in a meeting and you are devising a, a solution for that. So be aware of it. There is a special provision. There is a special article for it. And a controller might give you a special um, special instruction on how to handle this profile data uh, on how to how to treat that. So be, be careful and be uh, follow whatever they give you. Personal data breach, we all know about it, and accidental and unlawful destruction or loss or alteration of unauthorized disclosure, blah, blah, blah. We all know about that. Uh, so that is breach is a breach. So when that breach occurs, you have to take certain steps uh, and you have to treat that breach as a breach. Uh, should an imagination, imagination uh, is another word for tokenization. Tokenization is like, uh, uh, you don't give a real value out, but you kind of tokenize. For example, uh, you tokenize A1 into X1 and you don't give A1 out in the wild. You just transmit X1. So if X1 gets lost, you don't care because X1 is not real and you can always create Y1 and, and then if, if Y1 gets lost, you can, you can always create a Z1. Uh, but let's say if you encrypt A1 into X1, I don't want to confuse you. So let's say if you convert A1 into um, uh, B1, and let's say you, that is an encrypted value and the encryption breaks, then you have a problem. But if the tokenization value uh, is lost, then you have nothing lost because your, your orig original data is still intact. Uh, and tokenization means nothing because I'm calling Bob uh, John and John means hey John's data is lost means I have no idea who is John but you know Bob's data is still there so uh, it is it is called tokenization okay so uh, I can give you more detail in uh, about student amization but uh, it is basically a token you know so once the token is lost uh, nothing nothing is lost but encryption could be broken and we are working on we meaning you know our technology is working on uh, creating a you know uh, more robust solution uh, to provide that anyway uh, filing system any structured set of uh, data which can be accessible so this is another requirement in gdpr that a data subject should be happy to put their finger at, at any given time, wherever the data is. Your data could be in cloud, disk, database, tape, wherever it is. But for any any purpose, uh, data subject could ask you to, hey, I want to see my information, where is it? And you should be able to give them an access, you know, that they want to see 
uh, their data. So you should provide them the access. Uh, it is it is a loose term filing system. So what I'm trying to say here is don't make your data structure, don't make your filing system too complicated. Make it simple so that if if a data subject, if a natural person or a third party wants to see their information, they can put a finger on it. They can see that information without any, without going from one site to another site or one system to another system, meaning from cloud to disk, disk to database or database to disk or disk to cloud or vice versa or a combination of that. So make your filing system or your data structure simple and easy to access. All right, controller. Controller is the, is the entity who determines the purpose and means of the processing of the personal data. Meaning they are the determine, they are the, they, this is the entity who determines the purpose and the means of processing of the data. Meaning what, what is this data about? Is, it, is this data about the driver license? Is it about the passport? What are, what kind of processing will it need? Is it about social security number? Etc. So they will tell you that, hey, I'm giving you this data and it is about passport. So be careful like that. And then processor. So processor is looking up to the controller and say controller will tell you, hey, I'm giving you this data. This is about uh, this is about uh, this is about uh, credit card or this is about uh, I'm giving you uh, some secret information about a criminal data. This criminal is moving from this state to another state and this is how it is going to play out. So, and this is how you should process. I need to handle this secret information. This is how you will process. So that is what they are talking about. So processor will get a specific information from controller. And this is all spelled out in this article 13, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21, 22, 23. So if you want to read more about it, you can go to these articles and you can read more about controllers and processor, how they should behave. Genetic data, we all know what those data are. Uh, they are the unique information about, uh, about a natural person that is an inherited information that is an acquired genetic characteristic of a natural person. And because it is, it is so unique, and uh, it is about a, about that person. It needs to be uh, held held uh, securely, as securely as uh, you know you would, uh, because this is secret data. And not only that, about uh, if you have any analysis on that, that also needs to be secure. And why is that? Because any any biometric data that you collect. Biometric data at the end of the day is formulated into a mathematical formula and as such it becomes a static data. Meaning what you see the picture on your right, this picture becomes a mathematical formula and then it is a, it is a numerical number. And that's why it becomes a, it's a static number. And once the static number, once it is a static number, it can be stolen. It cannot. It cannot be modified because if I modify that number, then then this this uh, this figure has no value. All right. Then I have to tokenize. I have to encrypt the value, and then I have to throw it out in the wild so that I can I can transfer the data from point A to point B. Blah blah blah. So what I'm trying to say here is allow the confirm a unique identification of this biometric data. They have some characteristic some analysis and some so point point in cases this is a static information we have to be careful health data reveal information about you know about the people so similarly health data needs to be protected in a similar fashion main establishment main establishment means no matter where you are okay you could have an office in europe all right you might have a second office uh, in uh, some other state, or you might not have an office he here, but your main processing could be done here in United States. The processor is subject to specific obligation under this regulation, meaning you might not have anything to do with Europe, but 
you are processing the data here and that is why because because you are processing the data here that is why you could be liable to some rules and regulations all right so i'm not going to read the entire paragraph for you but what i'm saying is the main establishment the main establishment you are a controller controller has given uh, uh, something to uh, processor the processor could be uh, uh, some uh, you know it could be in some other state or some other it could they may not be they may not be able to process that data in that state and now it is in United States okay for some reason that data needs to be processed here or or some other country okay uh, or it could be in India or or in China or wherever so if that is the case that is why they have said the processor is subject to specific obligation under this regulation. And that is why then it becomes a main establishment. All right. So, so please consider that. Representative. And a representative could be anybody who has a designated, uh, it is a designated entity just by given a power of attorney or given a, a signatory uh, entity under Article 27 who is uh, controlling the, their their rights, uh, natural person rights, and 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 so on. So uh, so when you are when you are devising your GDPR data security, and if you hear the term that he is the representative, then make sure that that natural person, the legal person, has uh, properly designated with all the signatures and all that under Article 27. So make sure that you read Article 27. Enterprise, you know, I could be a small enterprise. I'm doing a business in in, in United States, uh, but now that I, I have some business in Europe and uh, I'm dealing with European citizen, and so now because I, I'm an enterprise, I am somehow I'm tied into GDPR because of my economic activity. Group of undertakings, uh, one or more business, they get together and they are doing business, so that is group of undertakings. So make sure that your supplier rules and regulations and all that. So you have your uh, uh, your uh, your compliance and your legal uh, your, your legal team. They look at uh, you look at your uh, your contracts basically. Uh, binding of a corporate rules, um, and this is what I want to this is what I want to tell you uh, because the binding corporate rules. Uh, if one company is in jeopardy let's say there are company A, company B, and company C, and if company B has violated something, and then in that case, all company A, B, and C, all these companies will have to go through uh, the same scrutiny of law and all that because, because of the binding corporate rules. Uh, third countries within a group of undertakings or a group of enterprises and within a joint economic activity. So they have to go through the same same rule, same rule applies, and a, a same, uh, uh, you know, whatever their ruling will be, the ruling will apply to all, all three. Cross-border processing uh, in the union by more than one member or a state, uh, or one member state that can substantially affect likely affects due to their data processing law. Uh, it is still possible that some some uh, states have different data processing law, or uh, that state might allow processing abroad uh, due to some treaties or some laws or uh, some some contracts or whatever. So cross border processing is still possible. It is allowed, and so make sure that you read the contracts and make sure that you have you are following the treaties and laws and regulations. So cross-border processing is possible. It is, and that is why we have to be careful when we are talking about GDPR. Uh, so make sure that you are uh, handling uh, those uh, rules uh, properly. Even though there is a golden rule that each uh, uh, each and every country they they honor different countries' law and they abide by their law, but that doesn't mean. Uh, that you can just uh, take it easy with that. So uh, please uh, uh, mark my words, uh, being a technical person, I want to 
tell you that you have to follow those countries' rules and GDPR is a law. Uh, so please, please be careful. Uh, relevant and uh, reasoned uh, objection and an objection to a draft decision to whether there is an infringement of this regulation or whether Envision Act in relation to controller or processor complies with this regulation. Meaning, you know, they, they have a free, they need to have a free flow of this personal data within the union. So if somebody marries from one state to another state, uh, previously there were a lot of uh, restrictions from moving from data from one state to another. If, they, if somebody buys a property in one state, uh, I'm talking about European state, okay? So if they bought a property from one state to another, uh, there are a lot of restrictions and flow of information were blocked from one state to another. So now they are talking about free flow of personal data within the union. So they have to provide this without any restriction and proper information security must be applied. So relevant and regional reasoned objection. So if there is any objection that, hey, my data was not freely flowed from one state to another, they can, uh, they can uh, uh, get to this objection. So now how do you, how do you provide this? Uh, how do you do the GDPR assessment? So basically, you, uh, there are 12 steps, uh, raise an awareness in your company, provide data accountability and uh, governance, communication on privacy, individuals' rights, understanding of data processing requests legally and technically, legal grounds, consents, children's data, handling data breaches, data protection impact analysis, data protection officer, in, uh, international impact. So uh, we are not new to these terms, data protection impact analysis, okay, what data we have, which, uh, which European Union countries data we are collecting, uh, how do we handle data breaches, do we collect children's data, are we collecting consents, uh, do we have any legal grounds, uh, data accountability, who, who is collecting data, how he is collecting, do we do internal audits, uh, do we have a security um, uh, information security uh, program? Do we have an internal audit program? Uh, communication on privacy. Do we understand privacy? Blah, blah, blah. Individuals' rights. Do we understand that? What are those? Uh, what kind of data processing do we do here? And do we understand the data security, etc.? So these are the 12 steps we, we have to understand for GDPR. And then you apply step by step. And then there are self-assessments available. There are, uh, there are no certifications as, as we go. There is no certification for GDPR, but there are some compliance assessments available. All right. So there is an article written by uh, none other than by me. I, I have written an article uh, in ICMA magazine. I tried to search the date, but uh, I will give it to you if you send me an email or search the ICMA database, uh, you know, secure versus non-secure, uh, moving from secure to non-secure. And in that, what I, what I'm, what I was talking about that if you are a non-secure business and if you want to move from non-secure to secure, what you have to do. So if you apply the similar principle uh, for the GDPR data and if you have a secure area already and if you are doing a sec secure uh, processing and then you, all you have to do is create a GDPR area and then implement uh, a due diligence, uh, meaning how, uh, how a person can implement a tool where uh, you have a lot of security so that data is secure and uh, from the non-secure side a person can uh, you know uh, a natural person can uh, can uh, view his data and then given a point if she or he wants to delete the data can request the delete function and then uh, your IT administrator can delete the data from that point onward and that, that consent and everything is stored in secure area. 
Well, uh, with this, uh, I will end this uh, seminar here. And thank you for your uh, participation. The article that I was referring to is now located at pageturnpro.com. Uh, please follow that link and you will have tons of uh, uh, good information on establishing a secure plant that is required for GDPR. Uh, the foundation for that uh, is ISO 27000 uh, certification, uh, but that is the minimum requirement uh, as they have spelled it out. But it does require uh, secure infrastructure. So you will find a lot of good information in that article. If you have any question on GDPR, please uh, contact us. Uh, if you need a GDPR compliance assessment uh, or any training on CDPO, Certified Data Processing Officer, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. And now I will give it back to ICMA. Thank you. If you do like our videos, then please click on like, share, and uh, subscribe to our channel.